today I will show you how to build better data loading in PyTorch using Torch Data. Let's go! What is data loading in the specific context of machine learning? We can see it as a pipeline or sequence of operations needed to transform data from its storage up to be ready for consumption by a model, for training or inference. The data can be stored in many possible storage, like local disk, cloud buckets, or pulled from an API. After reading the data, an arbitrarily complex process transforms it into a model-ready format, like tensors. So what's the problem with the data loader from torch.utils.data? The data loader is monolithic. It bundles too many features in the same class and makes composition and reusability difficult. Indeed, there are hundreds of ways to store a given dataset, and each requires a highly customized data loader. There are many primitive formats like tensors.pt files, pickle or json. Also the data can be grouped by folders, file name, regex patterns, file headers. The files can also be compressed in different formats, and so on. To support those cases, we need a custom or highly configured data loader. By all means, we would prefer to avoid writing again and again the same code to handle those specific operations in different contexts. Torch Data gives us an elegant solution. It provides single-purpose and composable data loading primitives. They are assembled in pipelines to match arbitrary complex data loading schemes to restrict the amount of custom code to the minimum possible. The core concept of the library is the data pipe. It's a renamed and repurposed implementation of the dataset for composed usage. There are two kinds of data pipe. Firstly, the Ether data pipe represents an updated version of Ether dataset. They implement the Ether method. You can iterate over them, but you can't access their items individually by index. They are well suited for stream datasets where random reads are expensive. As a simple example, we build the Ether data pipe, which starts from a range of integers and group them in two batches of even and odd numbers. To do so, it uses the functional group by data pipe, which returns the number modulo 2 as a key. Then we iterate and print the result. Secondly, the map data pipe represents an updated version of the map dataset. They are well suited for key value datasets where random reads are cheap. You can iterate over them and access their items individually by index. As a simple example, we build the map data pipe which starts from a range of integers and simply multiply every element by two using a functional map data pipe and shuffles the output. Then we iterate, print the results and show that we can access the item by index. We install the tools that we would need for this project. Many are already present on the Google Collab setup, but we need to add Kaggle, Torch Vision, and Torch Data. Since we use a Kaggle dataset, we upload our API key generated from the Kaggle website. It is necessary to use their Python client to easily download the dataset. Then we get the dataset with a simple command and we uncompress it to a folder named data. If everything worked correctly, you should see six folders, one for each class in the train and test folders under data. We start by importing some libraries that we will use later for the project. Glob, Ether Tools, Passlib, Torch and Torch Vision. Then we create some utilities for later in the project. We have two possible splits, train and test, and we create a dict to convert a split to its corresponding path on the disk. Regarding the dataset, we have six different classes and we create a dict to convert each class to an integer label. All images don't have the same dimensions, so we need a transform to resize them to a fixed size, 150 by 150 in this case. Finally, 
we write a function to give us an image class based on the path. The first parent folder is the class name, so we just take the stem of the first parent. The stem is simply the last part of the path. Ok, so we have everything to get started. The plan is the following. We start with the traditional data loading implementation with dataset and data loader. In the second part, I will show you how to achieve the same results with storage data functional API. We import the dataset and data loader classes from torch.utils.data. The first step is to create our Intel dataset. In the init method, we just grab the path based on the split using the function defined before. We define a method called listFiles, which simply lists all the images at a given path. The dataset interface requires to implement the len method, returning the size. Here, it's simply the number of images. The last step here is to implement the getItem, which retrieves a tuple of image and label given an index. We get the file pass at the received index, then we load the image using torch vision. We get the image label using our utility function, and finally, we return the resized image with the corresponding label. We have our dataset implementation. We can now create the data loader with shuffling and a batch size of 10 items. To check that everything is working as expected, we iterate over the first five batches and print the size as well as the labels. We see here that we get the expected number of items, five, and a shuffled dataset. So we built a data loading process with a dataset and a data loader. Let's now look at the new way to build data loading pipelines in PyTorch with Torch Data. We start by importing the data pipes module. We create a function called build data pipes, which returns a map data pipes given a split name. We begin by using our utility function to retrieve the split folder path. We start the pipeline by recursively listing all the files at the given path. It gives us a neater data pipe. Then we map a function to return tuples of image path and the corresponding label. We would prefer a map data pipe for this dataset to enable index-based access. To do so, we need an index for each element. We get it by using the enumerate pipe, which enumerates lazily every items in order. We can then call to map data pipe to convert our iter data pipe to a map data pipe. We can now read the image into a tensor with torch vision. Remember, we need to resize the image to a fixed dimension. At this point, we shuffle the data by chaining a shuffle data pipe. After batching by 10 items, we get a pipeline yielding list of 10 tuples. But ideally, we want only two tensors one containing the batch of images and one containing the batch of labels. To do so, we apply the default collate function from torch.utils.data. It transforms a list of tensor tuples to a tuple of tensors. And that's it. We have our data pipe ready to load our dataset. We iterate over the first five batches to check that it works. And as expected, we get batches of 10 elements shuffled.